G'day guys, welcome back to the True Footy YouTube channel for the second video of the year. In today's video, I'm going to be taking a look at some of the coaches across the league and uh, coming up with a list of five coaches that I think are going to start the year with some degree of pressure on their job. Now, it's uh, it's kind of an interesting one because we had a pretty good clean out of coaches uh, at the end of last year. So the list um, that I made 12 months ago would have looked very, very different. And it was a much harder video to compile this year based on the fact that there's quite a few coaches who are either brand new or there's a degree of job security with all of them. Because there were sweeping coaching changes last year, uh, including the names like Brett Ratton, Leon Cameron, Ben Rutten, David Noble, and uh, of course, Alistair Clarkson as well makes that list. We're getting a pretty clean slate when it comes to assessing which coaches are under pressure in 2023. Thanks for all the support on the first video of the year. It's good to have uh, have you guys back. It's good to be back. One big downside to recording in the summer is that it gets incredibly hot in my room. So if you are seeing beads of sweat, it's not because I'm nervous. It's just because it's about 38 degrees. Before we get into the meat of the video, uh, you may have seen in the last video, I am able to announce that I've got a partnership with Druzy's Athlete Academy. Now, as I'm sure many of you are aware, Druzy has been a big part of this channel over the last two or three years and he's just launched his own online strength and conditioning service aimed at improving the mental and physical capabilities of young men and women such as yourself. Now, you may be aware, Druzy did study sports science at university and now has some genuine industry experience. He's worked with the Perth Demons Future Squad as well as the Western Australia AFL State Academy. Druzy is particularly passionate about turning young men and teenagers into greater athletes and better people through fitness, discipline, and accountability. If you're a young athlete trying to take your fitness game to the next level, Druzy can improve your strength, fitness, and mindset to get the best out of your game. But this service is not just for athletes. There's programs also available for those who are new to the gym, uh, muscle bulking, or a program specifically tailored to your needs. Drews has always been a big proponent about the idea that physical strength does equate to mental strength as well. And that's something that I've been focusing on, particularly this summer. Through Druzy's service, you'll be able to feel a sense of self-improvement and learning discipline through structured training regimes. Take out the guesswork and allow Druzy to guide you through your exercise and fitness journey, missing the mistakes that people who don't have qualified coaches make. By using the code TRUEFOOTY20 at druzysathleteacademy.com or by using the link in the description, I'll leave it all in the description of this video, you can get 20% off on all of your orders of any program and begin to improve your physical and mental health. Cool, so now it's time to talk through uh, five coaches that I've compiled that I think will go into this season with some degree of pressure. I've tried my best to rank them in order of pressure, but uh, it's a little bit subjective to be honest, and you've got to consider all these variables such as you know their contract status, are they out of contract, or have they actually got a fair way to go on a contract? And there's some coaches in this list who still do have a contract that will somewhat secure them for a couple of years, but either way I included them because I think there's still a genuine pressure for them to deliver to some extent in 20. 23. The coach I think that enters the year under the most pressure is Port Adelaide's Ken Hinckley, who uh, I was surprised to learn is actually the second longest serving Port Adelaide coach. That time seems to have flown by and he's had a really good record there with a winning percentage of 58%. On top of that, he's actually never won less than 10 games in a given season. Of course, the, in the most recent season, they finished 11th with just 10 wins. From the outside looking in at Port Adelaide, there seems to be a high degree of pressure on a guy who does have a pretty good record overall. This seems to be a bit of an impatient fan base, or at least if it's not an impatient fan base, there's a very, very loud minority that don't seem to like Ken Hinckley, and even David Kosh has been outspoken about uh, not necessarily not liking Ken Hinckley, but certainly putting up pressure on uh, the ability to deliver on the promise, I suppose. Now, obviously, in the previous two seasons, they finished first and second, so to drop down to 11th in 2022 was a massive blow. Of course, they started the year 0-5, and, and I guess on the plus side, went 10-7 and from that point showing that they sort of had found their groove to some extent. Now, from the outside looking in, I don't think I'm not necessarily calling for a change at Port Adelaide. However, it's really important to note that this is a contract year for Ken Hinckley, meaning his contract expires at the end of the season, which means there will be a decision made one way or another this year. And that's why there's a bit of pressure on him to not fall back down the ladder again. What's the threshold or what's the pass mark for Ken Hinckley? I suppose we may all have different opinions. I'd say finals is probably a minimum. Their list is strong and their off-season moves do sort of signal some sort of uh, 
expectation on this year, I suppose. They've recruited a mature player in, in Junior Rioli. Jason Horn Francis, you could make the argument, is a long-term move, but I think overall they're expecting to push deep into finals this year. Especially when you look at the list composition, um, they probably need a strike sooner rather than later. They've got this, this really good band of older veterans who are going to be important for a premiership push. And while I really think they've got some stars that are about to hit their straps and potentially become A-grade players, there is a bit of a need to strike now while the iron's hot at Port Adelaide. So I think this one will be an interesting one to watch in 2023. Second on the list, I've included Luke Beveridge. Um, and this one is quite an interesting one. And I find the Bulldogs quite enigmatic. Very hard to predict how they're going to go in doesn't really matter where they finish on the season. Their ability to win finals against the odds uh, has always made them a very, very interesting team. Luke Beveridge seems to always be considered a coach under pressure. However, he did just sign a three-year extension at the end of last year. And he's a premiership coach and that faith has been paid into him. Last year, they did finish eighth, which I'd say was below expectations when you consider they made the grand final uh, 12 months previous from after finishing fifth. And the previous two seasons, they finished seventh and seventh. So again, he's probably one on this list where there's no real risk of him losing this job this year. However, because of the up and down nature uh, since 2016, obviously they bounced out of the finals and they've been up and down since, of course, made a grand final. With the list composition they're in, I think they're well and truly in their premiership window. And I don't think it's going to be quite good enough if they just finish mid-table over the next couple of years. In my eyes, the list is very strong and it's stacked with young talent. So I don't think they're anywhere near dropping off a cliff. However, I think given how well they played in 2021, genuinely were considered close to the best team at some various points in that home and away season for them to not make the top four this year which is something Luke Beveridge has never actually done I think that would be considered quite a misfire and of course you know if he finishes sixth and makes a prelim then that's probably a tick but I would argue he's not under pressure to lose his job this year I think that would be ludicrous however there is an inherent pressure for him to deliver and consistently push deep into finals and I think if they start to tread water again this year then there will be some genuine criticism that being said, they've made some good structural moves this year. Obviously, they lost Josh Dunkley, who is, uh, you know, an A-grade footballer. They shipped off Lockie Hunter and Shaki as well, um, less important players than Dunkley for sure. And they've added Liam Jones and uh, Rory Lobb as well. So from a structural point of view, they've tidied that up a little bit. The talent's strong, so there should be a big expectation on the Bulldogs this year. Next on the list, I've slapped Stewie Jew into this list, and that may seem harsh. Another uh, coach who's just signed a two-year uh, contract extension. But again, I'll remind you, I'm not really making a list here of coaches that I think are a chance to get sacked this year. It's just, I think there is an inherent degree of pressure on, uh, on any Gold Coast coach, to be honest, which is kind of ironic. So to paint the snapshot of Stewie Jew's tenure at the Gold Coast Suns, from the outside looking in, I think it's going pretty well. They finished 12th, which I think is their equal best finish to a season in 2022. Prior to that, they finished 16th, 14th, and the Wooden Spoon the year before that. So there's been some genuine incremental improvement. Because Gold Coast form can be quite tenuous, I think there's still always going to be pressure. He's not going to be completely comfortable this year uh, or next, which is uh, his contract ends at the end of next year. And there's plenty of reason to be optimistic from an on-field point of view. They're going to regain Ben King, who suffered an ACL like 12 months ago or a little bit before that. Um, and they've got a good young nucleus. Obviously, Tuke Miller nearly won the Brownlow medal. Matt Rowell and Anderson, um, we all know about those guys. What's the expectation on Drew this year? I think he could probably survive a stagnation year. But because when things fall apart at Gold Coast, the inertia can be very, very hard to turn around. And I'm, I guess I would just say that if Jude doesn't have a year where he's at least stagnated, if they fall right back down, then the pressure is going to go right up. I would argue that there's probably an expectation for the Suns to make finals before the end of his contract. So the end of 2024. And I guess my only real point here is that there is going to be pressure throughout that entire two years. I don't think he's entirely comfortable. I'm optimistic. I do think he's the right man for the job because there's so many disadvantages to coaching the Gold Coast Suns, to be honest. But like I said, it's tenuous. So uh, for me, he kind of makes this list. Next, I might pull a bit of a left field one here and I'll probably highlight Chris Fagan as a coach that will see a fair degree of pressure this year. And again, it's ironic because he's one of the best coaches in the league, but similar to the criticism maybe of Chris Scott prior to the Cats winning the flag, there's probably a degree of pressure on him to deliver while he's got the squad that he does. So to paint the picture, they finished sixth last year with 15 wins and uh, of course won a big final in Melbourne to get to a prelim. So kind of ticked a box that they hadn't previously ticked. Prior to that, there were three consecutive top four finishes. Two of those were top two finishes. And also when you consider that, you know, the, the list that Fagan inherited and built from being a basket case, like it, 
that wasn't that long ago they were a basket case and now they're uh, one of the premier sides of the competition. I think with all that in mind, you have to consider Fagan's probably one of the best coaches in the league, so I want to make that very clear. Where I think a degree of pressure would come from is the ability to really deliver in finals. I think this is something that has plagued them over Fagan's tenure, and they've had a fairly young list. I mean, I know there's some gun veterans in that side, but there's also a lot of young guys that are like, Prior, like about to hit their prime that they haven't quite reached yet. So the story for them has been strong home and away finishes and then in finals haven't really lifted despite, you know, obviously earning a lot of home finals in that period. 2022 was the first example of them winning a big final in Melbourne and, you know, they beat the reigning premiers as well. With some aging stars in that side, in particular Lockie Neal and Dane Zorko, I do think there is perhaps a need to seriously contend over the next couple of years while these guys are around, and I would argue that the Lions haven't seriously contended yet. Do I think he's gonna be sacked? Absolutely not. I don't think there's any real chance of that, but again, that's not the premise of this video, just trying to highlight the coaches under pressure in the same way that Chris Scott was, you know, prior to winning his premiership. There was criticism, that was probably undue, there was pressure, and obviously he delivered on that expectation. I guess what I would say is that if the Lions have another year where they contend strongly for the home and away season, look like one of the best sides, and then fail to deliver in big finals, which I'm not saying will happen, but if that does happen, then I think there will be a high degree of negative attention, which counts as pressure, even if it doesn't mean he's getting sacked. And finally, the fifth name on this list, I'd probably be a little bit remiss if I didn't highlight Adam Simpson, who uh, obviously the Eagles were a basket case last year, finished 17th, their worst ever season with two wins, and 20 losses. Since the Premiership in 2018, the results have, uh, it's been a slow decline. They finished fifth twice and then finished ninth in 2021. And that's where we started to see a bit of rot uh, with what's happening at the West Coast. Oh God, I said at the West Coast, what am I, Victorian? Look, last year was a disaster. And to be honest, I think everything that could have gone wrong went wrong in a big way. But if we're really honest, we started to see the signs of rot at the end of 2021 not just throughout 2022. Now it's again worth prefacing that this guy is on a contract at least until the end of 24. There's been some rumors that it's actually 25. So he's got two to three years left. So I don't think there's any real chance of him getting sacked, you know, over the next couple of years is very unlike West Coast for a start. And then there's the financial consideration of paying out a contract. But as has been a common theme throughout this video, it doesn't mean there won't be a high degree of pressure, especially from a fan base that expects success. Now, from an expectation point of view, it's clear that the Eagles are now openly rebuilding. Like that was said externally, and now it's being talked about internally, or at least from West Coast publicly. So expectations will have shifted. Going into 2022, the expectation would have been try and get yourself back into finals. Obviously everything went wrong. Now we're rebuilding. I actually don't know if a win-loss expectation is really relevant for West Coast. However, I do think Simpson does have something to prove this year. Specifically, there needs to be signs of genuine progress, i.e. getting back to a game style that is genuinely competitive because I think at the end of 2021, so not even 2022, at the end of 2021, the way we were playing was so not conducive to winning games that there was a genuine kind of mistrust built in uh, in Simpson and I guess the whole regime. Not necessarily my opinion, but I think it was a very fair criticism at the time. There was a stale game plan. Players really, really lacked confidence. They didn't look fit. So there was a lot of criticisms about, you know, the game plan and in the entire regime. What I would argue is that if the Eagles have another year, say 2021, where they finish ninth, but they finished the season as one of the worst sides in the competition on form. And like I said, all the signs of rock were there. But if they did that again and, and finished ninth, while that may be a huge improvement, I would say that's probably not a great step forward for us. However, a season where we maybe, you know, win six games and, and avoid the bottom four or even just make the bottom four, but there's some genuine exposure to youth, is a clear push towards leg speed and the, and the game style has been revamped, then that would be the signs of progress that I think would alleviate some pressure. If Simpson can build a side or at least a style of play that the fans can get behind, that would alleviate the pressure. But if he fails to prove that, then the criticism is gonna be thick and fast this season. Anyway, guys, that is five coaches that I think are probably under the most pressure out of the 18 coaches across the league. Obviously, we've got you know five or six new coaches this season. So as I said before, the, the slate's been wiped clean. Um, so yeah, this list was a little bit harder to compile, but I'm pretty comfortable with the, the logic behind it. And uh, out of that list, with only Ken Hinckley really being in a contract year, I'm not necessarily arguing that any of those coaches will be sacked. However, hope you enjoyed the video. Let me know what you agree with and what you disagree with. Who did I miss? Remember to go check out Drew's Athlete Academy and I'll see you in the next video, guys. Cheers.